how does it work? Let's take this one step at a time, shall we? Buzz table platform. Hi, my name is Warner Siebert, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of BuzzTable. And I'm John Brennan, and I'm the president and CTO of BuzzTable. So it's, it's very interesting to BuzzTable has four original co-founders, so besides John and myself, uh, we also have John Williams, uh, who heads up all of our sales, um, and then Mike Cerrone, who heads up our marketing. Uh, the four of us were at the dinner um, in the fall of 2010. I'm at a restaurant, about a 45 minute wait. Um, you know, we didn't want to just wait around. We thought, you know, we didn't want to get be tied to the host stand. We thought, okay, four minutes to kill. Let's, uh, you know, put our name down, go across the street, get our beer, and get notified when, we're, when our table's ready, get a call or something. Um, unfortunately, the restaurant doesn't support that, and they said we needed to stay um, really tied to the host stand for five minutes and just hang out. Um, and we really thought, you know, just kind of being these entrepreneurs got us thinking, and we're like, you know, there's got to be a better way. You know, everyone has a phone in their pockets. Could there be something? Um, along the lines of you know, tying that back to the phone, everyone has it in their pocket. Um, and that's how we uh, came up with BuzzTable. Uh, but BuzzTable is a, a mobile communication platform for restaurants. Um, you know, the, the marketing jargon would be a, a CRM platform, customer relationship management. Um, but what we're really trying to do is, is not only improve the overall guest experience during that wait time, uh, but also collect a lot of key customer uh, data and share it with the restaurant to help restaurants better identify, engage, and retain their guests. Uh, it's pretty simple. We actually designed it to have as few keystrokes as possible. Uh, we want this to be really easy for a host. So you touch the name screen. We'll use, uh, you know, we'll use Warren, for example. And then you take the party size. This is a party of four, for example. You can take the customer's phone number, so 555-555-51. Uh, give them a quote time, so say it's going to be 45 minutes, and then add anything, anything to the note. So, you know, booth or whatever it may be, a birthday, and then hit add party. It's really simple. It takes uh, literally fractions of a second to add someone's name in. You can see the entire list compiles on the left side. Um, there's a number of buttons here. There's a profile button. So here's actually me from before. If I hit the profile button, uh, you'll see the customer's name. Uh, you'll see the customer's uh, Facebook photo if they've connected through Facebook. Uh, you know, valuable information like the customer's birthday, any sort of uh, information that can be saved uh, and then reviewed the next time they come in in the preferences tab. And then also the history, so uh, the dining history of that customer. So it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Really, the main thing for that was we wanted to be shoulder to shoulder with the restaurant operators and the hosts um, using our product. And for us, what we decided to do is make a lot of, ex you know, a several experiments, right? And so we experimented with a variety of different restaurant environments, everything from, you know, your casual dining to your high end. Um, to diners, to, you know, to yeah. everything in between. And that's where we found casual dining to really be this, you know, I don't success, huge success, this huge bright spot, if you will. So it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Our revenue model is uh, it's it's basically a B two B SaaS model, so software as a service. Um, restaurants pay us a monthly platform fee depending on usage. Um, you can actually consider it a freemium model, so we allow restaurants to use portions of our platform uh, at no cost. And then once they reach uh, certain usage thresholds, then they start paying our, our monthly platform fees. So it's, it's very interesting to yeah. Early on, I think one of the, the biggest challenges for us was actually getting restaurants to use the system. We actually were out there selling the system before the system was even created. Um, and we met with a few restaurants. I mean, I think probably the hardest thing was actually getting that meeting. Uh, it's definitely been a little bit easier in the past year, but so many restaurants had been burned by the Daily Deal websites where all these people showed up and everybody left and they were just, you know, sitting there with their heads spinning wondering where all these people went and how they gave away all this product. So we got pinned in kind of the technology that they've been burned by, um, you know, but eventually once we kind of got into restaurants, we actually sat down with some of our restaurants at the beginning and said, this is what we're planning to do. It's, you know, almost complete. Would you use this? And we got people to sign up um, before we actually uh, had a product built, and they helped us fine tune that last 20%. Um, but really getting into the door and getting people to trust a new system in a live operating environment was probably one of the hardest things we faced. So it's, it's very interesting to get No. Um, and the short answer is no, not yet, but really I think it's uh, there's an interesting quote, I don't remember who said it, uh, beware of false summits. Um, so I think we've you know crossed several milestones, um, but we still have a lot of a lot of more work to do.
And then eventually, um, you know, we've already had requests from Australia, India, Europe, um, all over the world. So, you know, we definitely see this as a global idea. Uh, ideas are, are worthless and execution is really everything. So, um, just doing it, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, Nike's tagline, but um, really just being able to, to dive headfirst in. Um, you know, for example, I was uh, you know, making a pretty cushy salary and wearing a suit and tie to work every day, and I kind of burnt out, you know, at a pretty young age. Um, and that kind of pushed me to, to quit my job and move to New York. I moved to New York with no job and, you know, a savings account, so I definitely had that safety net there that you know, I had a little bit of uh, capital to, to fund myself. But it was really confidence. It was confidence that I was going to do something. It was confidence that I was going to, uh, you know, create something. Um, I didn't even know what it was. Uh, so my advice would be to maybe have a little bit more of a plan before you, you dive in. But it, it's really just taking that leap of faith in yourself and having confidence and, uh, and then just, you know, not looking back. Don't do it alone. Get a co-founder. Um, both for emotional reasons of the kind of the roller coaster, the instability and volatility of a startup, um, but also to bounce ideas off of, you know, yeah, you can get your, your friends, family, you know, who may or may not be the target audience you're going after, even customers, but, you know, no one's going to be living it and, you know, like, like you are, like eat, sleep, breathing it. Um, and the other, the other piece of advice would be um, to plan it. Don't, you know, I guess, you know, jump in in a way, but plan before you start building, I would say.